Welcome back to the Anti Remnant YouTube channel. This is Dorothy. Today is November 29th, 2023, and I pray all of you are doing extremely well. I cannot believe how fast this month has gone by. I don't know about any of you, but it feels like November has flown by and it is literally almost over. In fact, uh, this entire year has felt like it has gone by really quickly. And, um, you know, in a couple of days, we'll be in December gearing up to finish out the year. So uh, my prayer for each of you is that you are seeking the Lord like never before and that you are expecting great things from him in the coming days, weeks, and months. Um, today, I wanted to make a video and just share something with you in the hopes that this particular biblical story and revelation will bless you as much as it has blessed me. So recently, I was in the book of John, and I felt the Holy Spirit leading me to stop and really ponder and consider what I was reading almost like a nudge not to just read over the chapter, but to really drill down and allow him to minister to me in that moment. More specifically, I am talking about the 18th chapter in the book of John. And while it was certainly not my first time reading the gospel of John, it was the first time I read this biblical story from a different lens and gained a different perspective. So I wanna share that with you today. For many of us, the time has come when the Lord is preparing to elevate us to a place of influence and use us to help draw the lost to Christ. Okay, this particular biblical story is a lesson to all of us and shows why we must always resist the flesh and yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. In the book of John, chapter 18, just to give you um, some context, officers have come with lanterns, weapons, and torches to arrest Jesus. So this is after the Last Supper, and this is after Judas has gone to betray Jesus and let the officers know where Jesus was located. Peter is very angry about this because he knows that Jesus is innocent of what they are accusing him of. So to defend Jesus, or so he thought, Peter drew his sword and cut the ear of a servant of the high priest named Malchus. Jesus immediately rebukes Peter and told him to put away his weapon. The Lord told him, you know, violence is not the answer. And in the book of Matthew, as an account was given, scripture says Jesus warned Peter that when we live by the sword, we also die by the sword. So in no uncertain terms, Jesus was not pleased with what Peter had just done. Okay. Jesus then reminded Peter that he didn't need his protection because this was all part of God's plan for his life. So he asked Peter, you know, should I not drink the cup that the Lord has given me? You know, just because the cup includes suffering, should I not drink it? Should I do my own thing um, just because I'm about to face something that my flesh doesn't want to face? You know, surely not. And Jesus also asked Peter if he actually believed God needed Peter to protect him when just one prayer to God could provide 12 legions of angels. In a nutshell, Jesus is saying to Peter, brother, I didn't need you to do that. I didn't need you to cut Malchus's ear and I didn't need you to do anything violent in the name of protecting me. Yahweh is my father. And if he felt like I needed protection, or if I felt like I needed protection, I could pray to the Father and he would release all types of heavenly hosts to encamp about me and protect me. Like I, I didn't need you to do what you just did. So with this same biblical story, the book of Luke tells us that the Lord then asked Malchus for permission to heal the ear that Peter had just cut. And when Malchus agreed, Jesus went on to restore the man's ear. So the revelation I received through this particular scripture was sobering for me. It was very convicting and prayerfully it will reach whomever it is meant to reach and it will bless whomever it is meant to bless. Okay, but here goes. Many professing followers of Christ, like Peter, okay, often respond to those in the world 
like Malchus harshly, believing that we are somehow defending the gospel of Jesus Christ. But sometimes, in actuality, we are significantly wounding them, just as Peter did Malchus's ear. So there can be no question, Peter believed he was doing the right thing and that his actions would prove him to be a loyal friend and follower of Christ. However, Jesus immediately rebuked Peter's act of violence in front of everyone watching. It wasn't a private rebuke. He didn't pull Peter to the side and tell him this in private. He rebuked Peter in front of everyone who was there. And this is because Jesus wanted Peter, his follower, and Malchus, the unsaved, to be very clear on his mandate of peace and unconditional love. So anytime we hurt others in the name of spreading the gospel, knowingly or unknowingly, we are in error and no longer honoring the Prince of Peace. The gospel is the good news, and it's not meant to hurt other people. Rather, invite them to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And sometimes, that old spirit of religion tries to grab hold of our tongues and causes those of us who have been saved a little while to speak or behave in a way that is not representative of the kingdom. And when this happens, we cut off Malchus's ear. And for the sake of this video, Malchus is the unbeliever. Malchus is the lost soul. We cause pain. And not only that, we inhibit this lost soul's ability to truly hear the word of the Lord going forward. We make it all that much more difficult for them to receive and hear the good news because of the way we have cut off their ear or lashed out and caused a stumbling block for them. Now, am I talking about physically attacking a person who is not yet saved? No. I am talking about that judgmental critical, prideful spirit that often rears its ugly head in the church. I'm talking about the way some of us can be guilty of looking down upon or talking down to people who are not yet saved and walking in the light of Christ. As followers of Christ, I think the most important lesson to remember from this biblical story of Peter and Malchus is that Christ died for all of humanity. Right. So when Malchus and all of the men came to arrest Jesus, that was the beginning of a long list of things that would happen that would lead him to the cross. But on that cross, he died for all humanity. He was going to the cross for all of humanity. You and I don't get to pick and choose who is worthy of hearing the gospel. We don't get to choose who is worthy of being saved and experiencing the love of Christ because of how they live, what they're into, or what they do. God chooses. The great commission that you and I have is an assignment to go out and spread the gospel to all who will receive it, not only those that we deem worthy. So Malchus had come to arrest Jesus, but the truth is Malchus was just doing the job he'd been sent to do. He was not a follower of Christ. He knew nothing about the gospel and he had no idea who he was actually arresting. And it is the same for those who are lost. They persecute and reject Christ because they do not know him. Okay, Malchus came as an unbeliever on assignment from the high priest and was met with violence by a follower of Christ. And as I mentioned earlier, our quote unquote violence doesn't always need to be physical. It can be in the judgmental words we speak. It can be in the way we whisper and gossip about the loss when we should actually be praying for the salvation of their souls. It can be our impatience when an unbeliever tries to debate the Bible or when they speak against our faith or when they blaspheme our God. Or it can be the way we intentionally avoid fellowship with people we deem, quote unquote, less holy than us for whatever reason. There are countless ways to cut off the ears of lost souls and cause them to struggle to hear the truth of the gospel. We'd be here all day if I were to come up with examples of how we can do this, right? We are living in the end times. 
the lost are really lost. Okay? There is a lot going on in this earth realm. The enemy is snatching souls. He is busy. And in order to reach the lost, we will have to be fully purged of any religious, critical, or prideful spirits that would in any way harm them as they come to the Lord. They're already hurting. They're already being beaten up by life. They're already depressed, miserable, and engulfed in darkness. When they come in contact with followers of Christ, what will they be met with? Will we be the salt of the earth? Will we be the light? Will we exhibit the love of Christ? Will we point them in the direction of the only one who can save? Or will they be met with a sword? Will they be met with spiritual, verbal, and emotional violence from the self-righteous members of the church who forgot too quickly just how unsaved they once were? You know, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. And while some of us would like to think that our sin isn't as dirty or as offensive to the Lord as others, the truth is that there are no levels to sin. God hates it all. Right? Matthew 19, 17 reminds us that none of us are good. These are the words that Jesus said. None of us are good. Right? 1 John 1 8 says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The word of God reminds us that all of us fall short of the glory of God. So none of us really have a platform to stand on in terms of self-righteousness, right? Jesus Christ is our righteousness. When God looks at us, he sees his son. We have put on the righteousness of Christ, not our works, you know, not how holy, quote unquote, we think that we are. None of that. So it's very important for us to remember that every person we meet has a soul and that soul is either saved or unsaved. And that soul is either going to experience eternal life or eternal death. When we keep it simple, it's very sobering. You and I can't afford to get lost in all of the rituals and requirements of religion. Jesus came and kept set the captives free. And we must be sure not to get in the way. As followers of Christ, it is our responsibility to use every opportunity we can to show the love of Christ and share the good news. You know, Peter cut off Malchus's ear. But the agape love of Christ touched and healed him. And although the Bible never mentions Malchus again, there can be no doubt that his interaction with Jesus Christ in that moment changed him forever. The same man that Malchus came to arrest is the very man who healed his wound. We too once played for the wrong team. We too were friends with the world, which made us enemies of God. But because of the Lord's mercy and grace, we were saved and healed. So this biblical story is extremely powerful and needed during this time. Okay, there is a Malchus in your neighborhood. There is a Malchus on your job. There is a Malchus in your family. Malchus represents the unsaved and the lost and they are everywhere. So the question isn't if you will ever be face to face with a Malchus, right? The question is, how will you minister to him or her? How will you use that opportunity to show the love of Christ, even if the situation is unfavorable? My very last point is this. Jesus is a healer. Jesus is a healer, but he shouldn't have to heal lost souls from the wounds inflicted by the disciples he chose, trained, and sent. And that's us. Okay? If you are a disciple, then you are Peter. Right? And when you come face to face with a Malchus, the Lord is not expecting you to draw a sword. 
we must be ambassadors of Christ and a full representation of the kingdom and we must continually walk in peace and help draw souls by the way we exhibit love toward one another you know the Bible says um, that Jesus told the disciples they will know you are of me by the way you love one another matter of fact let me give you that scripture it's John 13 35 and it reads by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another so that's all I have for you on this video and God willing I will see you next time